Over the last 10 years, the local geospatial industry, through the work of players in both the public and private sector, has helped to move the country closer towards achieving these developmental goals and their underlying objectives. Let's examine just a few of the many ways in which this is being done. We are using the technology to support effective social protection, outcome three under goal one. Jamaicans are empowered to achieve their fullest potential. Through the work of the National Social Protection Committee, geospatial technologies is, is assisting the government to examine the distribution of social housing interventions in an effort to assess the reach of these interventions nationally. Path beneficiaries will be added to the map as an indicator of vulnerability. Geospatial analysis has also been integral in improving security and safety, outcome five, towards the achievement of goal two. Some of us would have already known that the Jamaica Constabulary Force received ESRI's Special Achievement in GIS Award last year. The JCF has been using the technology since 1992, but more recently has used it to assist in determining the extent of state of public emergency boundaries and demarcating areas with high concentrations of crime to facilitate targeted interventions. Data is also used to conduct spatial analysis of the JCF's geographic police divisions, identifying hotspots, hot products, and hot preys. We are using the technology to contribute to the development of a technology-enabled society, Outcome 11 under Goal 3. It is important to note that one of the sector strategies under that goal is to make available and accessible geospatial data products and services to all users to facilitate planning, sustainable use, management and development of the island's resources. Many MDAs have launched their own data sharing platforms, among them the National Land Agency's ELAND Jamaica and the Water Resources Authority's Water Information System. These and other platforms place critical information at the fingertips of the ordinary citizen and automate labor-intensive business processes. Both the public and private sector have been using geospatial technologies to improve our emergency response capability, a strategy under goal four. In the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak in Jamaica, the NERGIS team has been improving support to the Ministry of Health and Wellness's response efforts through dashboards providing critical COVID-19 statistics and contributing to logistics for food distribution in quarantined communities. The private sector is also contributing to this strategy. The team at Monogia Informatics Limited mapped all diabetics and hypertensives from the National Health Fund database, as well as all program of advancement through health and education path beneficiaries to support the work of the Ministry of Health's COVID-19 task force. Fellow GIS colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we have come a long way. And while we must celebrate our achievements and contributions to national development, we must acknowledge and address the challenges that still face us. At the policy level, we need to finalize the development of the National Geospatial Information Management Policy and develop an open spatial data infrastructure to facilitate increased data sharing. At the agency level, we need to delve deeper into the analytical functions of the wealth of GIS software we now have at our fingertips. Personally, I would like to see us use remotely sensed data more effectively, as I believe there are a wide range of applications and associated benefits to be derived from doing so. We should also advocate for the formal recognition of the GIS profession on the public sector salary scale to facilitate the improvement of salaries offered to GIS professionals. GIS professionals, as we continue to explore ways to use the technology to shape our future, I encourage you to act.